Okay, thank you all for coming here today. Uh, our presentation is titled Secure Software Update for Embedded Devices with SW Update and TAF. So uh, before we dive into the detail, um, let me introduce myself. My name is Kyoshio, and I have been working as a software engineer at Toshiba Corporation since last year. And my, my, uh, I'm mainly involved in research and development of uh, software update. Yeah, that's all. So look at the uh, agenda for today. So first is uh, I'm exploring about method for embedded devices with SW update. So next, I will, will delve into attackers and attacks. So to in understanding the security challenges. And next, oh, sorry. Our third is uh, when we uh, discuss uh, SW update security and uh, exploring uh, countermeasure against uh, well-known attacks and the vulnerabilities. And next year, uh, uh, from that, I'll introduce the uh, update framework TAF and uh, how in TAF enhance the existence uh, update process, so with using our SW update. And I'm giving you an example of how these concepts are executed. Um, finally, we discuss the challenges that we face and uh, what the future might hold. Yes, let's start. First is the update method for embedded systems. So why update system uh, embedded devices need to update. So uh, as well known, uh, the system of embedded devices being uh, more complex. At the same time, uh, cybersecurity is increasing now. So the, they are growing, need to fix bugs and fix the security issues. Uh, as well as uh, today's keynote session, uh, any uh, bugs uh, become uh, more uh, security issues. Yeah. So, and additionally, so there are uh, high demand for adding uh, new features. So after, uh, after these devices are released. And from this perspective, uh, updating embedded devices is crucial. So however, so the devices are so like uh, embedded devices are located in extensive or inaccessible areas. So we need to use uh, over the air update, a uh, remote update uh, extension. And next year slide is uh, I'll describe about overview of simple OTA update process. So the OTA update process can summarize into four main actions. So first is detecting. So the device check to see if it needs an update. So this is, oh, yes, this. And the second is downloading. So if there are an update, the device downloading the update image. The yeah, third is install. Yeah, it's simple, so the device installs the download image. Now well, the process of updating such as uh, apt, like uh, PyPA, like something like that, a library, uh, but embedded devices require additional step to the status or to the server. Yeah, these are four is uh, we need to uh, uh, implement it. So first step is notify. So yeah, the device shares data with the server. Uh, there are multiple tools for OTA upgrades, so we've chosen our SW update. So next I'll describe about uh, what is SW update. So SW update is highly suited for embedded devices. Uh, if it's efficiency uh, designed for limited device resources like uh, RAM or Flash, and uh, offer flexibility and compatibility uh, adapting to various situation. And moreover, there are a lot of practical implementations, applications, so we can check the website using SW update. Our ne our next is our, uh, uh, it's a 100% open source, uh, so, uh, and developed actively. So we chosen uh, SW update. And next, so as I mentioned earlier, it is easy to imagine that uh, this update process with SW update could be attacked. So. First uh, is an example, so with many embedded devices contact to the network for convenience or OTA update, so cyber attack is increasing now. So this can impact public service or infrastructure services. It is not just a theoretical uh, risk. Uh, as some, some infrastructure have already experienced these attacks. 
So let's explore the well-known attacks, starting with their attacker's motivation and goal. So this slide is attacker goal and the method. So we can categorize their goal into three main types. Uh, first is uh, deny installation of updates. So the aim here is to prevent system updated to exploit existing vulnerabilities. And second is impair the function of the device. So the, yeah, the goal is to interfere uh, with normal operation and render the system, un system unusable. Yeah. For the third is, uh, this is the worst case scenario, so hijacking the device. So the attacker aim to take a control to execution, uh, execute authorized activities. Yes, there are uh, three, uh, three goals. And there are four main attack methods that can be used to achieve these three goals. And we will briefly explain them. Yes, our first. So let's quickly go over the key player involved. So first, we have device. So this uh, is a device. So And this is a server. Uh, so first, uh, we have uh, the, this device uh, connect to the server. So this connection is very crucial for detecting upload image, update image, and downloading update, and notifying status to the server. And this is a uh, package, a distribution package. And this package is signed uh, with the signing keys. Uh, and this uh, device, uh, uh, verification, this signature, yeah, and if valid, device is installed this image. Uh, so we assume that an attacker is able to modify this communication. And it's also be assumed that uh, the key, this key, the signing key, can be stolen. So now let's look at some actual well-known attacks. So first is deny installation of updates. So uh, there are two types of attacks here. So first is uh, drop request attack. So block network traffic both inbound and outbound, uh, preventing the device from detecting the existence of update or even the presence of attacker. And next is our freezer attacks. Uh, so it's uh, like a similar drop uh, attack by continuously uh, receiving uh, old images or outdated images, the device are able to locate the new file version. So the methods effectively obstruct the update process. Now, next is the interfere with device functionality. So there are three types of attacks here. So first is uh, this involves a first forward attack and rollback attack, which manipulates the version number and to interfere with the device functionality. Uh, if authority increasing a version number, the device might see all version as outdated after installation. And conversely, installing uh, an older version can exploit past vulnerabilities. And next is the Enders attacks. So during the update image downloading, the attacker send an uh, infinity stream of data to the server, uh, device. So this consume a significant, significant space, a uh, disk space, and can lead to uh, several issues for the client system, a device system. So aiming to cause a functional breakdown. So there are three types of attacks works to partially or completely destroy the functionality of the device. Oh, well, this is the worst case, our control the device. So the arbitrary ensure attacks involves the installing the file without verification, allowing completely control over the device. Uh, next is the uh, exploit key. So this in involves the uh, misuse of a key to create and install any signing file on the device. Again, allowing complete control over the device. Uh, we will continue our discussion, uh, assume that attacks use these seven uh, methods to target embedded device. So uh, SW uh, update implemented uh, signing and verification to counter these seven attacks. So for signing and verification, use SW description. So uh, first I'll talk about uh, what is SW description. So SW description indicates the content of the update image 
like this figure. So this SW distribution uh, lists image file and files. So it organizes <coughs> uh, essential elements within update image, such as file name, uh, version information, and hash value, uh, like that, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, this is an example of the real actual SW description. Yeah. And this 2.0.0 is a version. And uh, uh, upper side is the uh, images, uh, root file system, and below uh, is the uh, image file. And um, it also indicate hash value. Oh, don't worry. Yeah. Also indicate bind value. And this information value by configuration. Okay, so sorry, please wait. Yeah. Okay. So by signing this SW description, we make a certification. So this means that update image will contain SW description. Yeah, SW description. Oh, this guy. And image file uh, elements, essential elements, so like an image file, files, uh, like a root file system, and a certification. Yeah. So SW description ensure update integrity in SW update via digital signature authentication. Uh, SW update has RSA and CML. Oh, this ensures the version information and other critical uh, data cannot be tempered with. So protect this data. So, and finally, uh, so, yeah, FTD prevent attacks such as uh, rollback or forward attacks. And additionally, SW operate has already been improved to reduce risks such as rollback attacks and understate attacks, which interfere with device functionality. So version related items, a compromise is made between the value of the SW description and the version already indicated uh, the configuration file. This is an example of configuration. Oh, Our, this, uh, here is a version, uh, no downloading and no reinstalling. Uh, version can be specified as this, yeah. Then SW update use this configuration. Our first slide, so let's look at the table, summarize how uh, well SW update can defend against the seven previous attacks. So A, line A, uh, represents a non-countermeasure. And while B, represents using SW description. So naturally, without any defense, our attack success, yeah. However, even the use of signatures, uh, drop request attack, yeah, here, and freeze attack, uh, and the vulnerability of two key compromise can still be successful. Uh, so, uh, SW description, uh, so this right there, update, diffusion, and component key risks. So, SW description alone cannot full address job request attack and freeze attacks. For instance, even if this threat exists, there is a note, uh, there is a possibility it might go unnoticed. Uh, certainly, it is possible to detect, for example, uh, different version when installing. However, uh, forcing error message for update failure could lead to excessive response in non-threat uh, scenarios. Yeah. Even notification due to update failure could be abu use, abused. And additionally, if the signing key used is compromised, uh, it, it is not feasible to replace it. It's essential to recognize the key can be compromised and plan accordingly. Uh, in response to this attack, we consider combining SW update uh, specification known as the update framework TAF. So TAF provides a security framework for software update systems it mainly covers the detect and the download step in the operator process. So the key goal of TAF here, uh, enhance, enhance the security for existing and new system, and adapt to various system needs. And uh, I think it, this is the important thing that uh, mitigates risk from key compromise. So we choose TAF for its ability to handle key compromise and its adaptability to existing systems. So this is right, security design principle. So let's look at actual principle of TAF. 
And first is trust. So trust the downloading file really means assume that files were provided by a party with that malicious design. Uh, second is freshness. So by setting an expir expiration date and the need to stay update, a client should be able to recognize the update may exist that they haven't been able to ob obtain. And SARA is a mit mitigating key risk. So a secure software update system must not naively assume that provided key keys are always safe from a compromise. So TAF is designed based on these three uh, principles to achieve these, yeah. The TAF use metadata and the role. Yeah, this slide that shows the uh, metadata and the role in TAF. So TAF has uh, four main roles. Yeah, main roles so are loot and timestamp, a snapshot, and a target. Yeah, target. So first, let's talk, uh, let's talk about metadata. So the, met the metadata hold different information for each roles. So and these roles have different levels of importance. So the timestamp metadata, yeah, timestamp metadata uh, lists the hash of and size of snapshot metadata. Yeah, here. And snapshot metadata lists the hash and size of target metadata. So this here is a uh, actual image the device wanted to download. Uh, in this presentation, this is an update image. So target metadata uh, lists the hash and size of this uh, update images. So their guarantee is shown with dot lines. Yeah, and by linking like these like a chain. Uh, spoofing is prevented. And root metadata is so very, very important and very, very important. So root metadata has hold all keys information. So a root guarantee, uh, sorry, a root uh, guarantee all keys held by the law are uh, indicated by red line. Yeah. Okay. Next, uh, let's talk about the uh, signing key. So they are used to sign the metadata uh, indicated by blue line, uh, blue arrows, yeah. Uh, this prevent uh, tampering with metadata. For instance, by ability root, you can ensure that the correct key are being used. Yes, and the keys present uh, here are all key used in TAF. So since the uh, device doesn't need to manage the key. So device don't need to manage the key. So the key can be exchanged only on this server side, uh, this metadata server side. So the three metadata are uh, managed automatically and can function in a network environment. Yeah, and therefore metadata must be continuously updated we need. Uh, here is a part of the root metadata. So you know, this side is uh, information. So includes a version of uh, this root file metadata version is number one. And it also lists the key information for each role. Here is the keys information. And the details are signed using keys and display this section. Uh, this is their signatures. Yeah. So this is their uh, metadata. So now let's begin at how to combine TAF with uh, SW update. So we use Python TAF. So the reference implementation of TAF for easy metadata signing and management. So we use Fast API for making the metadata server. And this server only delivers the metadata and management uh, the metadata and nothing else. So and in addition, the client have to have a script for refreshing metadata and downloading and butterfly images. So here are the overall structures. First is the server. Here. Uh, here is a metadata server mentioned earlier. Here is a metadata server. And uh, we need to, uh, the metadata server does not manage update image. So we need to prepare file server to manage update images. And we use a WFX for sharing the updated status with the device. So this is a 
uh, status sharing server, uh, WFAKS. So, and this is a GUI server uh, for managing these three servers using each API. You know, next, are on the device side, uh, there is a SRE update. It do basically job confirmation and the status shelling with uh, WFX. And metadata handling file download uh, handled by small script uh, client by. This is using a uh, Python task. Yeah. And this script uh, used from SW update uh, as a command. Uh, next is uh, I need to describe about uh, what is uh, WFX. Yeah. WFX is a lightweight generic purpose workflow executor. So workflow models as the fine state machine executed as a job uh, via WFX and client collaboration. So synchronize the status through polling and the status share for job on WFX. A workflow called device artifact update uh, has been implemented uh, this allows to the update status of SW update to be synchronized with the status of the job. Now, I use uh, this uh, WFX for sharing the status. So next is uh, UI and file server. So UI developed using Next.js for simplicity and efficiency. And file server created with a first API for getting on easy overuse. So Please note that, that this is a simple one created for demonstration on purpose. Yeah. And let's have briefly review the update for the combination. The first is yeah, polling. So there are two polling process. Uh, first is a polling process to update metadata. Uh, this uh, we call a refreshing. And the latest version is always available. And next is uh, for detecting job, this uh, there is a two polling process. Uh, next is a flow of detecting that there is an update and downloading it. So here is a detecting job through WFX, WFX, and based on this, check the metadata again. And if this version, the download image valid, uh, but if I, the download image, then install and execute it. So this flow is an install and state share. So when the SW update is sharing, uh, installing, it sends the status to WFX server. Thus each uh, the service or application will perform a combination update. Yeah, now let's move on the actual operation. So this is our experimental environment. environment. So use Python tar 3.1.0. And prefer host and I we prepare host, a host, and a device. So host is this spec, yeah. And we use QM to emulate the device. And the device run on a Debian-based OS using CIP kernel and the CIP core. And let's proceed with the actual operation demonstration. Uh, this left side, left side is uh, QM, so like a device, and the right side is application, top page. And then device is managed meant with AB partition. Uh, here is partition A, and here is the partition B. So currently uh, it's partition A and division two. So we will inter install to the partition B and we aim to the revision to uh, three. And, current, and this device porting to the WFX, WFX server in five seconds. Yes, now, now I'm using this application. Now this right side is our management devices. And we choose this, okay. Don't work. And we choose a QM. And this plays uh, also if okay we pick the QM. Uh, this plays the management platform. So firstly uh, we need to upload the image. So clicking upload also 
click upload and choose a selected one and upload. And enter the version number. And upload. Oh. And okay, upload. Look. Oh, hold it. Sorry. Wait a minute. Okay, oh, sorry. More games. Yeah, upload server. Upload file. And then the dot version. And upload. And clicking, uh, so this is uploaded. So next I need to uh, installing, so uh, uh, downloading and installing. So before this install download, we need to create a job. So we make a we make a job clicking. Okay. And make a job. So now status is now status is created. So create so the device is no uh, doesn't have a response. So next time is that we need to download the image to the device. So we click uh, download. Here, the left side the devices, and our uh, and at the same time, uh, devices download the dev uh, images. Our next step is installing. So this I click the install, and maybe. Suddenly start, yeah. This is a uh, push up and running the installing. And the device has stopped working and uh, uh, rebooting now. So the device rebooting now. And I'll enter the login. Yeah. And it shows the partition information. Yeah. This is a new partition and, oh, don't worry. Okay, here is a B partition. A partition B is a, a activity, a, a, it was success, and the vision is updated to number three. So this is the update process. Oh, uh, this demonstration shows that the update flow just described can be easily implemented on existing systems. So let's examine how security is specified uh, enhanced. So first against double request attack and freeze attacks. Uh, suppose the update of timestamps is hindered. So the device can't update the timestamps. So when timestamps expiration is reached, a device to attempt to upload update timestamp. But if it can't be updated, uh, we can detect the presence of uh, attackers. A similar expression applies to other laws, and version files are linked in a, like a chain, so allow for detecting of attackers. Uh, this key point is that uh, continuous metadata checks help clients that detect attackers. And yeah, timestamp is accessed frequently, so it is expiration is set to about one day. Yeah. And some, uh, so complete horology is imp impractical without all keys. If they are going to attack, they need to talk our all keys. We attackers need our all keys. Um, now let's see what's happened if key A uh, is compromised. So we talk about root key relo uh, rotation. So here is an example. Um, uh, the device, uh, no, no, sorry. Uh, the metadata server has a root A, a key A, and key B. So if key A is stolen, uh, if key B is stored securely, uh, key rotation is very, very easy. So the compromise key is removed from the metadata like this from metadata and add new key C, new key C is adding. 
Then metadata is signed with all three key, include key A, yeah, and updated. As a client doesn't not manage the key, so with uh, this simple step, key, key relotation is possible. And for example, in the case of root, rotation is possible as long as a threshold number of a key is not compromised. So in this case, the threshold is a two. So that measure can be easily taken in case of leak. So consider this, let's update our tables. Uh, she represents our new result of combining SW plate with TAF as shown we have achieved resistance against the potential attacks. Yeah, finally, I talk about challenges and the features. So, however, there are still challenges in implementing this update process. Let me mention two things, one, two significant ones. So first, there are remaining mines meter attack risk. So the presence of update can be detected, but they may interfere with status sharing. So if an update files uh, fails and the failure message is altered by an attacker, it's undetectable. And this necess oh. yeah, so this necessitates uh, the implementation of robust device authentication. And second, there is a risk of intercepted update vulnerabilities. Yeah. There is a risk that the update images can be reverse engineered and must be encrypted with a common key. This is also implemented in the standard SW update functionality, but the problem is that risk, uh, that this key cannot cope in the event of a compromise. So optimize SW update and Python tough WFX or alternative technologies. If kind implementation uh, are to be used, they need to be well coordinated and strengthened. This includes consideration of the use of OSS like uh, notary. So protecting a common key for encryption and device authentication also requires an idea of how to manage key securely on the device or the private key for encryption. And this is our summary slide. So yeah, the update process and no attacks were organized. Uh, combined with stuff, it could demonstrate resist to drop request attack and freeze attack. It was also able to show that it's easy to replace key and can resist a key compromise. A demonstration show how it works in combination with the server update and tough. But the challenges, mine the middle attack, disk end, and crypt image need to be considered. Finally, continuing build should be made based on current issue and other technology. So, and finally, so today's demonstration shows this uh, CIP booth. Uh, if you want more details, uh, please come here and I explain about that. And other technology about uh, include uh, CIP, uh, please come here. Thank you. So this is just an FYI. There is a uh, version of Tough that's yeah. actually specifically for IoT yeah. called Uptane um, that's yeah, yeah. used in automotive and AGL yeah. that does do uh, image encryption and yeah. also does the um, has better kind of man in the middle protection yeah, yeah. Uh, for that situation you're worried about where you send sign manifest back yeah. to the repository. Uh, so I, I know the obtain and I did our specification of uh, obtain. So I maybe I aim to go the obtain, but our car has a lot of CPU, so main CPU and partial CPU. Um, but the devices don't have a uh, lot of CPU, only one CPU. So um, uh, yes, obtain is very, very good, but we need to adjust to the embedded devices. Okay, well, uh, I'll chat with you about that later. But yeah, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Any questions? Raise your hand. No? Okay. Yeah, thank you.